Hi, hello, it's Nikki and welcome to my messy bookshelves. Today in the United States, we are celebrating Independence Day. And as it is the 248th anniversary, uh, it had me thinking of some older uh, things and how long it's been. And I thought it would be fun to share some of my favorite classic books today. So I have a pile here. We don't have, I don't think we have 10, I think we have nine here, but I decided that I would like to share those with you and I have kept out the children's classics because I thought it would be fun to make a separate video on my favorite children's classics. But I will dive in. The first book that I have is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell and this book centers around our young female protagonist uh, Margaret Hale. And she grows up in a small country town in the south of England. And due to her family circumstances, they have to move north. And they end up settling in a, uh, an industrial town in the north of England where, uh, again, this is set during the Industrial Revolution and it is the late 1800s. They settle in a town called Milton where there are cotton mills. And Margaret sees the suffering that takes place in these industrial towns. She sees the workers and how unkempt they are, how poor. And she forms a relationship with one of the mill owners. And we see her trying to help her fellow neighbors and the little scrapes that she gets into while trying to help them and her relationship with the mill owner. And I just love this book. This is one of my favorites. So this is the book that led me to start reading more Elizabeth Gaskell and I just love Elizabeth Gaskell, but yep, North and South. That is the first one. The next book that we have is Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. I always have a hard time saying that. And here we have another novel set, uh, I think it's the earlier 1800s or the late 1700s, but we follow two friends and one of them is a well-to-do young woman and the other is a girl who attended school with her but who is poor. And the friend, Becky, uh, has to earn her way in the world and we see their relationship over the years as Becky has to find work as a governess and how she uses her sex appeal to change her situation in life and all of these scandalous things that come with that. And additionally, we see their friendship and their relationship change over the years. So I love this one. It is scandalous and there are so many funny moments in this one. It is a chunker, but I don't know. I just love this one and I have read it twice because I loved it so much. And I think I am due for another read of this because it has been several years since I have read it. But Vanity Fair. The next one that I have is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. This one centers around a young woman, uh, a well-to-do woman who marries and they live in high society in Russia. And we see Anna, the main character, getting bored with her well-to-do life and her well-to-do but boring husband. And we see her start to form a relationship with a young military man and sort of see her downfall throughout the pages of this book. This one is super scandalous. I love it. It is another chunker, but I don't know. I This is such a page turner to me, so I love this one as well. The next one that we have is another chunker, <laughs> and that is Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. And this one, perfect, oh, well, I don't want to say perfect, but this one centers around the Deep South uh, during the Civil War in the United States. We follow the protagonist, Scarlett O'Hara, another young woman who is rather scandalous as well. And just the changes that are happening in the South after the conclusion of the Civil War in the United States. Maybe a controversial book, but 
I love it nonetheless. I love the descriptions, the characters are amazing, and I don't know, it is just such a good insight into what life was like during, before, during, and after the Civil War in the United States, and just how many awful things were happening in those days. The next one are, I actually have two by the same author. The next one is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. And this one is just such a riot. So I think this is one of her uh, novels that she wrote when she was younger. I think it's the first one that she wrote, the full, the first full novel that she wrote, if I'm not mistaken. You can kind of tell because it is a little bit immature, but it is so funny. It is so precious. And we follow a young woman who is obsessed with gothic novels. And I just love how it is kind of a parody on all of those gothic novels that she liked to read. So if you like gothic fiction, it is a gothic novel written by Jane Austen making fun of gothic novels. So I love this one. Always going to be one of my favorites. However, with reading uh, Jane Austen in July, I am looking forward to seeing how my opinions change. The next one is Persuasion by Jane Austen. This one, for a long time, I have said is my favorite Jane Austen. I would say that it's the most serious of her novels, but I think that this is the most romantic of her novels. And again, reading Jane Austen this month, um, another one of my favorites is Pride and Prejudice, but I don't have a standalone copy of that. But I'm looking forward to seeing how these stand up because my opinions have changed over the years with Jane Austen. So I'm looking forward to seeing how my rankings go at the end of the month because I am currently reading Sense and Sensibility and, uh, you know, we will see. But this novel centers around a, a slightly older woman. I wouldn't say she's old, but she is older than the typical young protagonist. And... Her and her family are relatively rich and they are well-to-do and she comes in contact with a gentleman who she was in love with in her younger years and her family did not allow her to marry him. Now he is back and he is quite rich and she is regretting her decision that she did not marry him when she had the chance. So. I don't know. I love this book. I think it is the deepest. I think it is the most serious, but I also think it is the ro most romantic of her books. The next book that we have here, another scandalous one, and this is Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. And this one centers around another young female protagonist who gets married to her husband, who she thinks is going to elevate her position in the world. And while he does, she becomes quite bored while she is married and she starts engaging in an adulterous relationship. And we see her sort of spiral and we see her downfall. So I don't know, there's a theme here. <laughs> we have scandalous women and their downfalls. I guess that is a theme with me, but Okay, it's fine. The next one that we have is The War of the Worlds. I have spoken about this one before by H.G. Wells, and this is probably my favorite classic science fiction. I am feeling the itch to read this again, but I adored this book when I read it. I've only read this one once, but I enjoyed it enough that I started annotating it, and I don't typically annotate not or fiction. But I annotated this one, I love it, and I am looking forward to rereading it. It is just like you think, you know, I'm sure you have all seen an adaptation of this in the movies, but we have aliens that are uh, attacking the Earth, so these scary tripod things, and just adventure, page turning, loved it looking forward to rereading this one as well and i think i only have one left and it is another one that i have spoken about on this channel before and that is dracula by bram stoker i think i have read this one maybe four times now maybe five times 
it is one that I just love. It is so dark and moody. It is like the chef's kiss of gothic fiction. It is so atmospheric. It is not cheesy like the movies that we see with Dracula in them. It is very spooky and I don't know. There are several scenes in here that live in my head as being super spooky, especially the scene with the ship. But this book is told through letters, journal entries, and newspaper articles. And I just thought that was so cool. I love it. And I enjoy rereading this every single time that I do. And yeah, that closes us out for my favorite classic books. So I would love to hear what your favorite classics are. And I thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.